Hi everyone, this is Larry. Uh, I'm here today to do a beer recipe. Uh, it's my approximation of uh, Bell's Two-Hearted Ale, which is a hoppy pale ale uh, loaded full of Centennial hops, uh, even including a first wort edition of Centennial hops, which I'll uh, cover as well. Adds a lot of flavor to the beer. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, I'm going to cover uh, some of the basics, some of the more advanced techniques. This is going to be sort of an all-around general video, uh, not really targeted towards any beginner or advanced brewer. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Morning, it's brew day. Here we go. Uh, I got hot water heating up um, for our beer today. To uh, start off with the all-grain batch today, we're making mash. Um, in order to make beer, mash is a mixture of uh, malted crushed grains and hot water that steeps like a hot cereal for, for, for you know, about an hour. Um, to get some of the sugar, all the sugars out of that grain, uh, which will turn into beer later. To, to do that, uh, I have a trusty malt mill here that I put my grain into, and gr mill it up, grind it up into a big bucket. I got the uh, caramel malts, uh, carapils malts, and the bulk of it's going to be pale ale malt. Um, that's going to be the, the base malt for my beer. So let me grind that up, and we'll move to the next step. Okay, uh, I just got the milling the grain. You can kind of see here that uh, this is uh, what milled malt looks like. The uh, husks are slightly uh, broken open. The endosperm and the other contents are lightly crushed. This uh, frees up the starch in them to be converted to sugar um, by the enzymes in the mash. So let's get this stuff in the mash. All right, folks, here's my mash tongue. Uh, my, uh, actually, it's my mash slash water ton. Um, you see like the ma manifold down below? Uh, they have holes underneath them that I drilled. And uh, it pulls the mash, the, or the wort when it's done, through this manifold and out the spigot here um, and into the to the kettle later. I'll show you how that's done after I fill this thing up with grain. Okay, I got my uh, grain stirred in, hot water, it's steeping like tea. So now I just got to cover it up and let it sit there for an hour and check out it then. Alright, uh, it's been an hour. This stuff is ready to go. Uh, mash is done. Passed the starch conversion test and is ready to be drained into my kettle. So let me get that started. Okay, uh, I forgot to mention this when I first put them in, but um, first word hops. Uh, here they are. I put a half ounce of Centennial hops in the bottom of the uh, collection vessel uh, while I was, uh, and still am, extracting uh, my, my wort from my mash. So uh, it's called first wort hoppings. It's a sort of a, a technique to improve the flavor of your beer. Here's my uh, first runnings from the uh, mash tun going down, filling up the pot. Uh, I'm probably going to be doing, um, well, I'm definitely doing a second runnings and maybe a third to fill this thing up. The kettle's boiling, uh, about 15 minutes, I, got, I have a 75 minute boil going here, so this is, uh, it's been about 15 minutes since I started the boil. Uh, at the 60 minute mark, I'm throwing in about another half ounce of Centennial hops. I'll let that go, uh, another 15 minutes. I guess this is time for my second uh, hops edition, uh, Centennial hops, more, another half ounce. It's, uh, the boil's been on for a half hour now, I put one edition in at the 60 minute to zero mark, uh, this is the 45 to zero minute mark. I'm going to put another half ounce in there, uh, set the timer for another 15 minutes um, until I get down to the half hour mark and I'll add more. It's, uh, we're at the 30 minute to zero mark here. I got uh, another half ounce of Centennial. Oh yeah. Oh look at that greatness in that, that little bucket of hops there. Uh, throw that in there for another uh, 15 more minutes and I'll throw yet another addition in. Guys, we're at the T minus 15 minute mark. Uh, this is where everything comes together. I got my uh, my next edition of Centennial Hops, another half ounce going in there. I'm also going to throw in, um, let me reach over here, grab some Irish moss. This is going to help with uh, uh, clearing the wort or the beer so it's more clear. It's actually seaweed uh, that's been re rehydrated. So it's uh, T minus zero. I turn off the uh, the flame. Got my aroma hops right here. I'm going to toss those right on in there. Come on, get in there. There we go. All right, all good. Then I got uh, my um, my immersion chiller already sterilized uh, in in the in the muck. 
I'm going to turn this thing on, cool this thing down from boiling down to about 75 degrees in about 20 minutes. Now I'm draining the uh, kettle, about most of the way done. Draining it down to the, uh, through my little mesh filter to get some of the crud out of there, some of the trube they call it, which is like uh, hops and uh, hot and hot break and cold break. That's going right down into the uh, kettle just fine there, or the uh, carboy. You can see uh, it's a little over three gallons now. I'm going to get up to about five, maybe five and a quarter, hopefully, and uh, then I'll add the yeast. Uh, about five gallons of uh, freshly brewed wort, ready to aerate and add yeast to. I'm uh, aerating the uh, beer with uh, some oxygen, with an aeration stone, going up to a can of oxygen there, and uh, get about a couple minutes to uh, rebuild the oxygen reserves in the wort so the yeast can have a feast. Uh, pour it in the yeast and um, inoculating my beautiful wort. Uh, five gallons of liquid greatness ready to ferment and produce a loving beverage. The airlock is in place. Mission accomplished. Brew day accomplished. Except for the cleanup. It's day two. The yeast is actively growing as you can see. Um, there's a lot of activity going on inside the carboy. Got a nice uh, yeast cake starting to build up there. Uh, the turbulence inside uh, with the yeast taking that sugar and converting it to both alcohol and carbon dioxide. Uh, let's take a look at the airlock. You can kind of see right there. It's just going crazy. Built another carbon dioxide, CO2. So this is going to go on for a period of days. And when it slows down, I'm going to let it age for a few more days. And then I will keg it. This is day three. Um, you can see here that the yeast uh, cake got really big, really tall, and it's still fermenting pretty well. Activity is slowing down a bit. You can kind of see it's starting to, well, it's still kicking around, but it'll slow down even more. And then you can also see the airlock here is um, still moving, still bubbling. It's slowing down, day three. Uh, the yeast cake will, uh, will recede. Activity will slow and the wort will clear. It's been two weeks. The beer is ready to transfer into the keg. As you can see, the the beer lightened in color, clarified, and uh, left a nice little uh, yeast cake on the bottom there, which will go to waste. And it's got a nice nice color to it, and it is ready to transfer. And let me hook that up. The beer is now uh, being siphoned right out of the uh, carboy, right down into my waiting corny keg, my Cornelius keg. It's about a five and a half gallon uh, keg used for soda pop or soda or cola or whatever you call it from whatever part of the country you're from. Um, but it's filling up with beer right now and that's all I care about. You can see in there that it is the uh, beer's filling up and when it fills up I'm going to put the lid on it and pressurize it. And then it'll be a few more days until we can drink. Now I've got the uh, lid on finally. Um, I got my CO2 line in there and I've purged the uh, remaining air out of there. So now it's all carbon dioxide and beer in here now and it's going to mm, pressurize over the next few days. I'm going to put it in the, into my kegerator here next to me and chill it down as well. Alright guys, time's uh, arrived. It's chilled, carbonated, tapped and ready to go. Let's give it a pour. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, nice and carbonated. Look at that head forming on there. Okay, time to try the beer. Oh, that is good. Well worth the effort and, and the weight. Oh man, nice color. Good head. Good hoppy aroma. All that centennial hops comes through. Oh. This is delicious. Mmm. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I know I'm going to enjoy this beer. See ya.